Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Chris and today I'm going to rank my five favorite episodes from The Simpsons Season 1. Alright, before we get started, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you know when those videos are coming out. So, on to The Simpsons. Uh, this is a show that I have loved since I was a little kid. You know, it's been on the air over 30 years now and it's still coming out with new episodes. That's astonishing to think about. That's a little controversial to some. Some people say, you know, well, at this point in time, at this season, this is where they turn bad. Uh, for me, it's been a pretty consistent run. Every time I catch an episode, it's better than no Simpsons is the way I look at it. So looking at this, I thought I'd do a project, uh, especially with all the series coming out on Disney Plus. Uh, started going through and watching the series, just finished season one, and I thought I'd just go through each season and rank my five favorite episodes from each season as I go through the series. So like I said, I've done season one. I'm in the middle of season two now, so as soon as I get done with that, I'll do another episode. So this is, I guess, going to be the start of a 30-part series on this, so uh, we're going to have some fun with it. Now, looking at season one, it's typically viewed as a weaker season, and I can see why, especially when you start looking at, you know, as you get into like season three and moving forward, it does move a lot slower in places and it's not quite as rapid fire. And they talk about that a lot in the commentaries as well, that this show really speeds up as you go through the seasons. So that doesn't mean that there isn't some great episodes though. I mean, there's some of my favorite episodes are actually in this season. And I do want to give a special shout out to some of the ones that didn't quite make the cut feel like I'm naming the rest of the episodes, but I mean, you know, the Telltale Head, a uh, great episode. Bart the General, where we really get introduced to Nelson Muntz. Um, you know, of course, the very first episode, Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire. Uh, absolutely uh, strong opening, really. Uh, there's, a, there's No Disgrace Like Home. And it's another really good one as well with the uh, infamous uh, kind of electric chair scene where they're all kind of like electrocuting each other. Uh, that's another great uh, episode. Really not a, sh a weak episode to be found. There are some that just move really slow. So as they as they move forward, you know, you can tell they tighten up and they get a little quicker with their jokes and with the storyline. But still, they, they got off to a great start. This got great ratings out of the out the gate, so it, it wasn't like it was one that kind of developed its audience. It found an audience pretty early on. So, all right, so we're gonna go with these. I'm really excited to kind of share this with you guys. So, let's dive in. My number five episode for season one of The Simpsons is Life on the Fast Lane. Uh, this, of course, has Albert Brooks as Jacques which is, of course, Marge's uh, love interest, uh, temptation, you should say. And uh, I thought their chemistry, Marge's and Jacques' chemistry, was really good. Of course, it all comes from, a, which will be a classic trope that we'll see throughout all of the series, which is Homer is an idiot, and Homer is kind of selfish and thinks really of himself first. And it's really not until he kind of gets hit on the head and, hey, you're being an idiot, that he kind of comes around and realizes that, hey, you know, I'm maybe, you know, maybe I'm being a little little selfish on this. So, you know, that basically happens. You know, it, it's Marge's birthday, and Homer forgets that it's her birthday and gets her a bowling ball with his name on it, drilled with his finger size. Yeah he was clearly thinking that Marge wasn't going to take up bowling and he was going to keep the ball for himself. Very selfish on Homer's part. Well, out of spite, Marge just decides, hey, forget this. I'm just going to go use the ball. And so, of course, she meets Jacques at the bowling alley and Jacques kind of sweeps her off her feet. 
and you know actually gets her you know a bowling glove with you know Marge you know written on it and a very sweet gift and of course Homer suspects that there's something going on and there is something going on although I would make the argument it doesn't quite go so far as for it to be an actual affair um, it definitely was a huge temptation for Marge and in the end of course she ends up uh, choosing Homer and choosing her marriage and uh, there's the big happy ending at the end so um, of course one one of the things that makes this one of my favorite episodes of this season is Albert Brooks as Jacques typically if Albert Brooks is in an episode he's probably going to be the one of the really good things about that episode he is so strong in this series as he is in various other things that he's done throughout his career um, but he really does a good job of that back and forth with Marge and Julie Kavner as Marge just does a wonderful job great chemistry and of course you know a lot of his lines still the you know the, the one about the one about brunch is is really <laughs> is a really good one um Another thing I love is, is just the whole idea of the bowling ball birthday gift. It's such a great way to show Homer really doesn't think well and doesn't, doesn't really think outside of himself until he's kind of forced to. And I love that Marge was so spiteful in that moment. Like, yeah, I'm going to use this ball. And, and Homer just kind of blurts out, you know, like, well, why would you want to do that? Like, I <laughs> think your cover's blown, dude. But, um, yeah, it was a it was a great way to kind of further that plot along. It's a great plot device to have there. Um, now, I will say this: I have never participated in an affair. I am very happily married. However, it does feel like it was a very realistic portrayal of an affair. Uh, you know, Marge is just racked with guilt. But she's also very flattered and very obviously attracted to Jacques. And so she it's clear that she's fighting those feelings back and forth of what should I do? Should I go for this guy that you know is just shows me all the care and devotion in the world that my husband is not even coming close to doing right now? Or do I throw away, you know, a marriage that's resulted in three kids and 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 a lot of history together? So you know, I think they did a wonderful job of really pulling that back and forth with um, with Marge and showing that you know, I don't think that uh, I think that when you're tempted like that, it it would seem to me that it's not just a oh okay we're just gonna go do it like you're you're really uh, pulled back and forth on that end of it, and uh, you know, I love the ending as well on this you know uh, uh, um, yeah, of course it parodies an officer and a gentleman and um, just the whole line about you know, I'm taking my wife to my car and I won't be back for 10 minutes <laughs> it's just a great joke but uh, you know it's it's a great episode it it furthers Marge's and Homer's relationship along and it really kind of runs them both through the ringer in a way that is very meaningful My number four episode is The Crepes of Wrath. Yes, Bart goes to France. Uh, of course, Bart has kind of, he's ticked off his father. He's ticked off Principal Skinner. Principal Skinner comes up with the idea of sending him to France for three months as part of a foreign, foreign exchange program. In his place is an Albanian boy named Adil. And, of course, shenanigans ensue. But you know, Bart thinks it's going to be great. We're going to go to France. It's going to be awesome. And, of course, it's not awesome. Uh, he shows up at the Chateau, and the, the guys there just, I mean, they, they make him sleep on the floor. You know, they make him you know, taste, you know, taste test wine that's been contaminated with antifreeze. I mean, you know, they make him pedal in the rain to go get, you know, stuff from the store in town. I mean, they're just really horrible to him. And, you know, it's it's kind of despicable in a lot of ways. And, of course, with a, with Hom of course, Homer really takes to a deal who ends up actually being a spy. And the FBI ends up arresting him and, you know, kicking him out of the country, basically. Exchanges him for another American child spy, which was, there was a whole different subplot there. You know, it's like they had a lot of history there. 
But um, of course, you know, Bart is able to learn French and tells uh, the French policeman that those guys are contaminating their wine with antifreeze for the taste, I guess. Is that a thing? I, I really fail to see where that could be a thing. You know, if someone wants to better educate me on wine, then maybe, you know, th throw a line in the comments to me about it because, you know, I don't see how antifreeze would really help, but whatever. Um, but, you know, the French policeman, you know, figures it out and then, of course, arrests the gentleman and, you know, Bart is given an award and he's able to go back and he's all the better for it. He's a lot better for his experience. Until, of course, the next episode, <laughs> of course, because everything's forgotten in the world of The Simpsons by the next episode, which they joke about later on, too. Uh, so, you know, it's it's a great Bart episode. It's I love that it's the first location show, really, where The Simpsons, even though it's not the whole Simpsons family, but, you know, The Simpsons go to blank. And, um, you know, I think it's a really good Bart story. Like, I think the great the great stories are the ones where they kind of put those characters through the ringer and they definitely put him through the ringer um i mean the cherry bomb i mean that uh, it's so awesome that they tested it on mythbusters i mean what else can you say i love the way they set that up and you know of course skinner's mother agnes is on the toilet and you know it, it them doing it in the boys' bathroom causes all the water to go up in all the bathrooms, and there you go. It's, it's, that's all she wrote, and that's what kind of drives Skinner over the edge. Another thing I love is, is I love that Agnes calls Seymour spanky, and I don't think this was a thing that continued. I really wish it was, because to me it was so funny, because I mean, you know, at this point in time, you know, Skinner is just such an authority figure. He's so serious. And, you know, it's like, that's all gone. I mean, he, he, she's completely, like, de I guess defrocked him almost in front of everyone. So, uh, but I, think, I thought that was really funny, too. And I thought the Adil subplot was really funny. Of course, Homer takes to him, and he's the son that he wish he always had. And he ends up being a spy. I mean, it's really funny and it's another it's a great episode and um uh, yeah, I still find myself like with all the episodes of this season really I mean just finding finding another way to laugh my third episode for season one of the Simpsons is Krusty gets busted sideshow Bob enough said <laughs> I mean, you know, Kelsey Grammer as Sideshow Bob is one of the great guest turns that are is a recurring character on The Simpsons. It's going to be really hard as I move through these seasons to not automatically put that Sideshow Bob episode into the top five as we get to it, because it seems like it's pretty much a seasonal thing where he does one episode. Um, can't say enough good things about it. Of course, the plot, you know, Krusty is, you know, of course, Bart's idol. Uh, Homer is at the Quickie Mart, and Krusty robs the bank, or what appears to be Krusty. And everybody believes it was Krusty. Homer fingers him in court. Bart doesn't let go of the rope, though. Doesn't believe it, so he starts, him and Lisa investigate. And they later find out that, yeah, it was actually Sideshow Bob who has taken over Krusty's show. Sideshow Bob was the one that did it. And so Krusty is freed, and, and it's all because Bart was the only one that would believe, that would believe him. So, again, Sideshow Bob can't say enough good things. It's his first appearance, technically. Um, his, of course, he was in an earlier episode, kind of in the background, you know, but this is really where Kelsey Grammer is that character, and he's really the main kind of part of that episode. Uh, it's just spectacular. I can't say enough good things about that character. He's one of my favorites. Um, Homer and Patty and Selma's relationship on here is so well done in this episode. Of course, they're going to be antagonists 
they're going to antagonize each other throughout the all of this series but they i mean just you know the the him calling them the gruesome twosome and that being filmed off the security camera and then getting put on the air and their reaction to that oh the truth comes out it's just so it's so well done i mean these people they hate each other you know homer detests them patty and selma hate him and are constantly looking for ways to get marge to leave him and you know what sometimes like he, he kind of deserves it because he's kind of a moron, but hey, it's Homer, so what are you going to do? Uh, now, this is also one of the first ones that really deal with Bart and Lisa kind of teaming up to solve a problem, which again, they make kind of fun of later on. They parody themselves later on a little bit. You know, they really put their heads together and help solve the case. And of course, Krusty is great in this episode as well. Can't say enough good things about that character. I mean, he, to me, you know, he's one of those really solid side characters that really has almost become a main character in his own right. And then, of course, the line, the line that gets me in this episode more than any other one is when Bart is on Sideshow Bob's show and Sideshow Bob you know, basically says something about filling Krusty's shoes, and Bart finally remembers that Sideshow Bob's foot gets stepped on when he's robbing the Quickie Mart, or Krusty's uh, foot gets stepped on when he's robbing the Quickie Mart, right? So he remembers that it was like towards the toe end, and so he's like, wait a minute. So he hits him with a hammer. I think it was a hammer, but, um, of course, like Bob's in pain and doing all that stuff. And he says the line, he's like, see, Krusty has small feet like all good-hearted people. <laughs> and it's like, what the heck? I mean, I'm sorry, it was a good line. And it's so, like, throwaway. He says it so fast and then moves on. It's one of those, I think, that you just kind of, you catch the more you watch it. And it's just, it's a great line for a great episode. All right. My number two episode of season one of The Simpsons is Moaning Lisa. Of course, Lisa's sad, and she's kind of having like an existential crisis, basically. And she meets this jazz guy, Bleeding Gums Murphy, and that music and playing with her, or playing with him, I'm sorry, kind of helps her to feel a little bit better. Marge is also kind of coming to grips with kind of her own upbringing, kind of being forced to be happy whenever she wasn't wanting to. And so she kind of tries to force that on Lisa a little bit and realizes that she's in the wrong and really kind of supports Lisa and gets Lisa to feeling better because she feels supported and loved. On the flip side, Homer is getting his butt kicked by Bart in a uh, video game to the point where he goes to an arcade to figure out and to get lessons on how to get better at that boxing game, kind of like, almost reminds me of like Mike Tyson punch out a little bit or something. And uh, goes back and he's about to beat Bart and Marge unplugs the, uh, the game right as he's about to finally beat Bart and Bart decides to retire at that point. So it it's a pretty simple episode. To me, I really love Lisa episodes because they have a lot of heart and they kind of hit more on the dramatic aspects of it. And I think Yardley Smith does a great job with Lisa of kind of bringing that more emotional side of the show out. And I think it's really the first great Lisa episode. And of course, Bleeding Gums Murphy. Being a, uh, a musician, as you can tell in the, in the background, um, loved to hear a sax man just wailing away and you know, Bleeding Gums was a really good character and his really kind of that pseudo-mentor father figure kind of role for Lisa in her quest to become a great jazz player. Uh, another thing that I love is, <laughs> it's little things in the show, but Homer has two screams in this. that Every time I watch this episode, me or Michelle watch this episode, it we laugh so hard at this episode. 
what with these two screams. Of course, when Homer's having the nightmare that he's actually in the game and Bart is just beating the living daylights out of him and then hits for the final, you know, knockout punch and then he wakes up and that scream beats anything in any slasher movie, any horror, thriller, doesn't matter. That scream is so good and so perfect. And the other one, which is the funniest one to me still, is when Bart and Homer are playing that final boxing match and Homer's beating the tar out of him. And finally he's getting ready for that last windup and Marge pulls the plug and shuts the game off. And when Homer, you know, it's that, oh no! That, the tone, everything on that is so funny. I, like I said, I've seen this episode probably 10 to 15 times by now. And I still laugh so hard when that comes up. And if my wife is watching it with me, it doesn't matter how many times we watch it, we have to rewind it at least two or three times and listen to it again. So, um, again, another great episode that's got some really funny moments in it. And just, but, you know, still is, is, has such great heart and really what makes The Simpsons great. All right, my number one episode of season one is The Call of The Simpsons. I mean, come on. You got Albert Brooks in another role. This time he's Cowboy Bob. Uh, Homer, of course, gets jealous of Flanders, so he goes out to try an R to buy an RV. And the only one that he can afford with his credit is a really, really old, crappy one. And, of course, they're driving out in the woods and everything, trying to go camping. And basically, Homer drives it off a cliff. <laughs> they're able to get out just in time. And so... Um, Marge and Lisa stay and build a camp, although they have no experience doing it. And Homer, Maggie, and Bart go seek out to go try to get help. And of course, Mar or Maggie gets separated from Bart and Homer. And Homer's supposed to be this experienced woodsman. And <laughs> of course, they end up having a horrible time. Homer get, ends up, everyone thinks that he's the next Bigfoot. You know, Maggie gets off with some bears and basically becomes part of their family for a little bit. And um, at the end of it, yeah, basically they can't tell. Scientists, you know, they you know, study over Homer and they can't figure out whether he's, you know, Bigfoot or just a really dumb guy. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, this... This this one is my favorite episode for a lot of First of all, like I said, Albert Brooks is Cowboy Bob. Great, great choice. And of course, I really think him, whenever he plays a character opposite Dan Castellaneta, their chemistry, whenever they go back and forth and their ability to improv is really, really magnetic and awesome to watch. Um, there's another one later on where he plays Hank Scorpio where they're going back and forth about hammocks. And it's just, it's a beautiful improv going back and forth. And it's the same way here. Uh, Homer is Bigfoot. <laughs> that whole sequence, you know, where he's trying to get the, the honey and you know, he's getting stung and so he jumps into the muck and you know, the guy's filming it and he ends up looking like Bigfoot because of all the mud, the way it's all over him. Um, you know, it's just, it's so great. And, you know, I am actually one of the people that I love there is a point where Homer is too stupid, but as Homer does get stupider, especially throughout the early seasons up through like season 10, that to me is Homer's sweet spot right there. He still has a heart. He still, even though he's selfish and even though he's an idiot, he wants to do the right thing at, at the end of the day. But he's just, as, um, as you know, he says, and in, in, as he says, you know, oh, Lord help me, I'm just not that bright. <laughs> but, um, uh, that's, you know, that's a great one. Another thing, and this is, again, one of those just those moments that every time it comes up, got to rewind it a couple times and just listen to it. But it's the whole, when they're trying to trap a rabbit, and of course he, you know, he gets the, the, the trap set, and it just, you know, a rabbit kind of jumps into it, and it just ends up hurling it. Looks like about three or 400 yards. The sound, <laughs> the sound that the rabbit makes when it hits the forest floor. Just that plop sound. 
I'm I'm losing it right now thinking about it. Like to me, that cracks me up more than anything. And you know, the same way with Michelle, it's another thing. You know, we we have to go back and rewind it a couple of times and listen to it. But uh, it's it's just a great moment. And again, it and the screams from Moaning Lisa are definitely my two favorite moments of the of this season. And then also the sensationalism in the press once Bigfoot is discovered. I mean, it's very typical of your typical um, tabloids. I really love when like Marge and Lisa come out of the woods and, you know, they like show her a picture of Bigfoot and they're like, oh, that's my husband. And then it's like, oh, I married Bigfoot. I mean, it's, it's such a great kind of lens at how that tabloid media would react in that situation. And um, another thing is I love Maggie and the bears in this episode. To me, Maggie is actually my favorite character. She, despite not being able to talk, despite being an infant, is actually probably the most capable Simpson in the room. I don't know what that says about the rest of them, but she's always very capable and able to take care of herself. And, you know, the way that she goes in and just kind of takes charge of the bears and, you know, one of them ends up sucking a pacifier and, you know, and when she leaves, like, they're really sad to see her go. She's really become a part of that family. I just love that dynamic and love that kind of backstory that was going on while the other stuff was going on. Um, but, yeah, that's uh, that's The Call of Simpsons. It is my number one pick for the, my favorite episode of The Simpsons Season 1. So, you know. Let me know what you guys think about in the comments on this. You know, what's your favorite episode of season one? You know, am I crazy for, you know, not going with the telltale head or another episode like that? Or, you know, Simpsons roasting on an, on an open fire? You know, let me know how, how crazy I am about it. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a like. You know, we're going to be, like I said, as I move through these uh, seasons, I'm going to be doing these ranked videos, you know, going over my favorite episodes of each season. So... You know, give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you like what we're doing and all our related nerdtastic ramblings. And uh, we really appreciate all the, uh, all the feedback. So, you know, until next time, I'm Chris and we are D's Nerds and you guys have a good night. Thank you so much. <laughs>